Hey friends, welcome to our next episode of The More View you Know. My name, as you may or may not remember, is Emily Liddell, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I have two really exciting guests with me for this week, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves, their names, their pronouns, um, what office or organization they're a part of, and then something they think that students have to check out when they get to Nashville. Awesome. Hi, I'm Natalie Erb. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm the director of residential colleges, which oversees the Commons experience as well as Common View orientation and Vanderbilt Vision for our study orientation program. Um, I would say the thing that students have to check out is the Civil Rights Room at the Nashville Public Library downtown. I think that event is super cool. I think Nashville played a lot of important roles in the Civil Rights Movement, so you can really see some, some super neat things. So it's just downtown, a little bus ride away. Really cool. I haven't heard of that one, so I'll definitely have to check that out. All right, Priya, what about you? Hi, my name's Priya, um, and I use she and her pronouns. I'm a rising junior at Vanderbilt, and I'm a view scepter, so I'm part of the organization view scepter. Viewsepts. I am a returning view scepter, which means this is my second year as a view scepter. Um, and I also am an MHS major, Medicine, Health, and Society. I, didn't, I don't think I said that. And a place that I think that people must check out is a place called Plaza Mariachi. I believe it's in North Nashville. It's just this amazing cultural experience. It's kind of built like a traditional marketplace, a traditional Mexican marketplace, I believe. And there are a bunch of shops, a bunch of food. And my favorite part about the place is that they have this stage and a big open dance floor area. And on Thursday nights, they have salsa night. And there's free salsa lesson. And then you can just dance a night away over there. And it's so one of my cool. favorite places. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I, one of my favorite things about this series is I'm finding things that I need to go check out. So thank you both for being here. OK, so could you both briefly describe your office and organization, what your team does, and then what I, as a first year student, or why I, as a first year student, may interact with you? So, Natalie, if you want to take more of the office side, and then you can talk about the set, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so residential colleges is really the overarching system that all first year students will live in. So, um, anything that you can think of programmatically that you want to see us do, we are always willing to help you. Um, uh, we have an office on the second floor of the Common Center, and um, that's where Dangerous Selfie's office is. She's always willing to talk with students as well, so we're just here to make sure that we have a really strong first year experience. Awesome. Yeah, and then my organization, ViewSEP, is one of those organizations part of the residential college experience. And basically, we're all about mentoring first year students. Um, there are a couple of other organizations that do something similar for different groups, but we're really focusing on the first year experience. Um, and so we have a student view scepter and a faculty view scepter who partner together and then they have a group of uh, first years who they mentor and um, I think the best thing for students to come to us for is A, you're finding a group of other first year students that you're being randomly paired up with and having all these cool conversations. So it's a great place to make friends. B, um, you have a lot of really interesting conversations outside of your classroom that you wouldn't normally have. So definitely a great place to engage in something that's not for a grade but still making you think and C it's a great place to go for resources so your student view center and your faculty view center should have a really good hold on what resources are available for you around campus and even if they don't they'll know who to go to to find those resources so definitely a great place to go if you have a problem or a need and don't really know what's out there for you but we can help you connect to that. There's so many different ways that uh, your view sectors will be able to help you, so please take advantage of that. All right, so not to put you on the spot, but what is either the best piece of advice or just a really good piece of advice that you both have for students as they start their Vanderbilt experience pretty soon? So yeah, what's the advice y'all have? Very soon, actually. Um, so my best piece of advice is to take chances and put yourself out there. I think um, so often I hear students talk about the fact that they just felt like everyone else really um, had things well for them or like it fit really quickly and didn't feel like they were struggling at all in fact everyone finds that it's a little bit tricky to make that transition so um, I found too in my first year experience like you just got to go out there and try new things introduce yourself to random people really try out um, anything that you're interested in and, and be brave because um, I think you're gonna find that that's gonna yield some really great um, experiences and be the best way to make connections across for sure, that's great advice. And honestly, kind of stealing from what I was going to say, um, my huge thing is for all first year students and all students in general, we should know when to say yes and know when to say no. So I'd say as soon as you get on campus, that's the time to really be saying yes. Go out, 
with the go meet new people who ask you to get lunch, go, go out of your way to go try out some new extracurricular, try out something new in Nashville, so many things in walking distance. Um, this is a really great time to be saying yes and you'll feel like you never missed out on an opportunity. But at the same time, also know when to say no once you get a little bit more involved in things and you really need to be taking care of your basic needs first. That's when you can start scaling back a little bit on certain things and still leave enough room to be saying yes to new things and trying out a range of activities until you feel comfortable in what you are doing. I love that. Every week I'm like, where were we all when I was a first year student? But that's okay. I really appreciate that advice. Okay, so jumping in, we're talking about visions and UCEP, as you may have seen if you saw the graphic I posted earlier. So um, I'm going to start with what is Vanderbilt Visions? And is it the same thing as I've heard visions? I've heard Vanderbilt Visions. So what is it? Is it a class? Yeah, it's just kind of the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, Vanderbilt Visions is our extended orientation program. Vanderbilt Visions and Visions are the same thing. Um, so you're not going to see a separate title for that. Um, it's even the same thing if you hear someone call it a BUCEPT group, even though it's not called a BUCEPT group. Um, but those are all going to be the same program. So as an extended orientation program, that means that you are going to be assigned to a group of 16 to 18 new students. Um, you're going to have a faculty and a student BUCEPT, as Priya mentioned, and you'll meet for um, most of the semester for 50 that's five, zero minutes every week. Um, those meetings are always on a Monday or a Tuesday after Visions really has um, three primary goals. We're really trying to help you transition from high school to college, thinking about how to build community um, across campus, and then thinking about your connections to campus resources. Um, when you ask, is it a class, kind of yes, kind of no, right? Yes, it's a class in that you need to attend it like it's a class. Um, it's going to show up on yes, um, and you are expected to go every week. It is mandatory. <laughs> so we do want to see your smiling face at every weekly meeting. Um, but it's not a class in the sense that um, it's not graded, there aren't homework assignments, um, it's really a discussion space. So you're not going to have kind of the same environment that you would have in a traditional classroom. We just really want you to use that time to get to know the other people in your group and think through some of those transition topics together. Uh, anything you want to add to that? <laughs> that sounds great to me. <laughs> She's like, period. Um, <laughs> perfect. Okay, well, and you talked a little bit about the set. Um, but maybe if you want to elaborate on what it is, you know, is it a student org? What if, let's say, I'm a first year student, I have a great time, can I be a view sector? Kind of, yeah, what is view sept and what do y'all do? Maybe how could you become one? Yeah, so Visions is going to last from the beginning of the school year, so around orientation time, and then we meet weekly through the end of October. Um, and so that's going to be the whole experience in terms of meeting with your group, doing the discussions that you, the view sector, the faculty and student view sector group are planning out together. So that is going to be the visions experience. And then after that, I believe in the beginning of the second semester is the time in which we sort of send out the application to apply to be a view sector. And I highly recommend everyone apply. It's a super, super fun experience. And then just so everyone knows looking forward, there's this whole orientation leader training experience that we do. It's a full week before we welcome everyone back onto campus um, at the beginning of the school year, and it's just an amazing time in development. We're, we love training to be able to welcome the first year students onto campus, and it's it's such a great group of people, and I've learned so much from them. So again, highly recommend just putting your application out there and applying to this program. That's incredible. Yeah, I will say so. I've worked with USEP for just over a decade, and USEP itself is actually one of the oldest student orgs on campus. So it's over 50 years old. They have always been in the business of helping new students acclimate to campus life. Um, so we're really fortunate to get to partner with such a strong organization. You'll know that you're talking to a view center during welcome week if you see them wearing the shirt that Priya's wearing. That is the, the uniform, as we call it. Um, so look out for those I Heart View shirts if you have questions or you need help. Awesome. And I know y'all mentioned faculty view sectors. Will they be wearing the shirt too? Will we see them around? You know, because they're not in school, but they're a part of the Vanderbilt community. Yeah. Okay. Ten thousand percent. They also get an IMRB shirt. So <laughs> awesome. Be on the lookout for that. Cool opportunity. Okay. So, what if I have to miss a vision vision session? I know you said it's mandatory, but what if I have to miss? <laughs> yeah. So, if you absolutely have to miss a vision session, I would let both your student and uh, faculty view sectors know so that they can mark you as an excused rather than unexcused absence. Um, 
and then hopefully they can be able to send out maybe some of the materials that they might be working with during the vision session. Um, again, we really want everyone to be coming out to those sessions because we, we do put a lot of thought and effort into each week and it really works best for everyone to be there at the same time so that we're interacting with one another and getting that dialogue, which is the main component of the, of the session. Um, and then I'd also say some examples of a good reason to be missing visions are say, you have a professor schedule review session that you can't necessarily change and that's during visions, that would be a good reason. Other things like that where they happen to be scheduled for a one-time thing during their vision session, um, other than that, it's not necessarily a good excuse to be um, studying last minute for a test because we'd like you to prepare ahead for that and you might not necessarily be missing another class or something like that. So again, just try to plan ahead as much as you can. Your receptors will be very understanding of whatever does come up, but we would love for everyone to be there at our sessions. Yeah. I give you another space to say mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> word. It's mandatory. Um, Religious holidays also are a great reason why you might miss uh, visions. Those are always a fourth minute excuse. I know that comes up a lot because they are on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, but we really, you do really just get as much out of visions as you put into it. So the more that you attend, um, you're really going to have those opportunities to connect with one another. And what a great time to practice time management, which we all know is really important in college. So that's awesome. And life, really. Um, okay, so how are visions groups selected? And what if I want to be in a visions group with my friends? Yeah, that is so sweet. I'm glad that you want to be in a group with your friends. Visions is all about making new friends. So um, you cannot select a visions group. Um, I'm going to assign you to one. I, I know I've, I've spoken to several of you via email already. Um, but those groups are really constructed to be what we would call a microcosm of the larger Commons community. So we want you to interact with folks who are not going to be in the same student orgs you're in, they're not going to take the same classes you're taking, they're not necessarily going to live in the same house you're living in, right? Like, I've heard people say, you've been asking me that question. No, your vision's room assignment does not correspond to the house you live in. Um, <laughs> but so we are really trying to make sure that those are pretty balanced groups where you're going to get to intersect. If you're as a first year student, that's really the only time you're going to live in the same proximal location to the rest of your class. So we want you to take an opportunity to do that. If you do have a class conflict, I know there are quite a few of those out there right now, those are um, being a right now. So you'll see that those will change on yes before open enrollment starts on Wednesday. So no need to panic. Calm down. Um, they will get adjusted and um, and usually I would say your visions group assignment is flexible all the way until the end of July. So I would wait until the end of July to confirm in your brain when you're going to visions. Really good to know. Uh, Amy, that up for you? you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so I would say going off what Natalie said about how the vision groups are selected, so it's we're really, like she said, trying to get this microcosm of what you get from the Commons whole group, and I think that's so important because a lot of times as we go through our college experience, we tend to find people who are very similar to us in certain ways because, of course, it's so great to connect with those people. One of my favorite groups of people on campus is um, SACE, which is our South Asian org, and those have become some of my dearest friends, but of course, we want to kind of get out of the spaces that we're most comfortable in, and Visions is one of those places. I'd say also kind of like your um, floor in your Commons house. Your floor in your Commons house is going to be a relatively random group of people, and your Visions group is going to be another relatively random group of people, people we just wouldn't normally meet going out of your way. So a lot of people find that they have amazing friendships come out of this that they wouldn't have expected, and just a great opportunity to be able to meet people that you wouldn't have normally met. That's awesome. And I want to give uh, props to Natalie, who puts so much intentionality into creating these groups. So just know they're random, but they're not just like we put names in a hat and we're like, oh, I'm sure here's some group. We really do try to make it the best experience possible. So, um, and you can hang out with your friends after. So no worries there. And you'll okay. have friends in it too. And new friends. <laughs> oh, love it. All the friendships. Okay. So what if my visions assignment overlaps with a club sport or a student organization that I want to join? Um, in fact, that you have a very short window of time to let me know that that's true, because obviously your student orgs, your club sports, those are not going to show up on your schedule And yes, and that is the schedule we use to determine when you're available for vision. So if you know that there's something you want to participate in that's not an academic commitment, um, I do need you to send me an email at visions at vanderbilt.edu um, requesting that change. The deadline to request that change is midnight tomorrow, which is um, July 19th. 
So um, very quick turnaround. I believe in you. You can send those in to me, um, and we can make adjustments from there. Um, if you need an academic change after that time, we can absolutely accommodate those, but we cannot accommodate non-academic change requests after the 20th of July. So we always like to say you'll have plenty of opportunities in the spring semester to get connected to those student orgs or club sports, um, but vision should be one of your top priorities since it is mandatory. Great word. Uh, anything you want to add to that? <laughs> yeah, I think especially that notion of how you can always go to that club or organization in the spring is so important because you're never going to get this visions time back. They really put a lot of intentionality and planning into these sessions and there's really no other opportunity within the whole four years unless you decide to apply as Vceptor, which we love for you to all go to your vision sessions and apply to be a Vceptor together. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that that's like super important. And then another thing I'd say is that your clubs and organizations should be really understanding of your visions commitment as well. I will say like when I was a co-captain in my dance team and we had students going for visions either as receptors or as first year students, we were always accommodating that and still having them in you know, whatever dances we were planning for that Tuesday dance rehearsal time, we could still have those students a part of those dances. We just catch them up on the side or whatever we could make work. Vanderbilt students, we do it all. So <laughs> we know how to make things work for every student to be as accommodating as possible. That's awesome. Perfect. All right, so this is the final question, so really can't wait to hear your answers. What's going to be discussed in Visions? Um, what do we do during the sessions? Like, yeah, I'm trying to prepare for the semester and what that looks like. So what do we go over in Visions? Yeah, so all of our Visions groups, and there are 92 of them this year, mm -hmm. they share one um, common syllabus for the, the semester. And that's going to go over kind of those three goals I talked about. But a lot of the sessions are going to be based on topics that are raised so it's really important to read the campus reading as well. Um, so you'll talk about things like identity and interacting with people who are different from you. We'll talk about resilience and how to really develop some of those strong um, coping mechanisms as it relates to mental health and well-being. And, um, and you'll talk about kind of what comes next, right? How do you start thinking about what kind of career that you want to have? Or how do you start thinking about the ways in which you can engage in experiential learning on campus? Um, so that's sort of the framework that they all share. But you want to talk a little bit about what a session might look like? Yeah, so a session might look like a common, we'll probably do some icebreakers in terms of how did your week go and get to like ease into things a little bit. We'll probably do some sort of activity and then probably do some reflection on that activity so that we're really getting the most out of whatever we're doing during that session. And I will say also, we do really love to follow the syllabus. There was a lot of intentionality put into that syllabus. Um, but we also are a little bit flexible in terms of what specific activities we're doing. If you have something that you would want to bring up to your receptor to do, we're all ears and we'll definitely try to incorporate it into our sessions. It's about bringing the most out of what people actually want to be getting out of it. So definitely, it depends on your receptor, of course, but I know I love to be really as flexible as possible so that we can really get the most out of it. That's awesome, really help students to take authority of their own sessions and really kind of speak into that. It's really cool. Um, well, thank you both. Do y'all have any final, you know, words, reminders? I know that they'll probably be hearing from you after soon, all the good things. Anything else y'all want to say to our first students or first year students? Yeah, I mean, fun facts that you, I'm sure, are a member from this. It's mandatory, right? Yeah, that's my favorite. Um, if you do have a change request, I want to hear those tomorrow. And um, and as Emily mentioned, your view sectors will start reaching out to you around August 1st. So. Um, I know I'm sure Priya's already started working on her letters. Um, <laughs> I am. Yes. So, <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> you should expect a, a snail mail letter if you have a domestic address or an email if you have an international address. And then actually your receptors will also call you before moving. So be on the lookout for that as well. If you don't hear from them or you ever have questions about your visions assignment, that visions at Vanderbilt.edu, the email address is the way to go. Nothing else for me, really. We're just so excited to welcome you all to yeah. campus this fall. It's going to be here before we know it, and we're so excited. Um, well, thank you both for taking time out of your busy schedules and your summer, and we really appreciate you coming by. And until next week, it's Emily, and this is The More You Know. Thanks, all. <laughs>